Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the Cozy Girl Fancy Nails podcast. I'm your host Michaela. This is the coziest but fanciest podcast on the internet and y'all if you're watching I dolled up my face because I dolled up this space. Okay bars. <laughs> I was not expecting that but you can see behind me I have Cozy Club back there. I'm sitting in a chair. I feel like this is like full on podcast. Like this isn't just some girl at a nail desk trying to make a podcast. Like this is a full on podcast and I'm so, so, so excited. So welcome. If you're new here, thank you for listening or watching whatever you chose to do. Whew, I'm out of breath a little bit. <laughs> I've been running around like trying to figure out the best way to make this space work and when you have limited space, but big ideas, you figure out how to make things work and I'm just excited. So we're talking about do's and don'ts in the nail salon today. So let's just get into it. So my drink is coffee, though it should, I guess at this point it's considered iced coffee. I made this at seven in the morning and it is 12 44 p.m. So <laughs> this is uh what is that five five hours well actually almost six hour old coffee that it takes me forever to drink so it's fine <laughs> I have it here uh just to say that I have something but I probably won't drink it this time because I'm talking the whole time I'm not just watching old videos trying to cheat I'm just kidding I'm not cheating. So today I'm talking about the do's and don'ts in a nail salon, but I'm adding a twist to it because I've never worked in a nail salon. I haven't, I work out of my house. <laughs> so there's like a lot of things that are different for me than for other salons. So if you have opinions or thoughts on any of these do's and don'ts, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. Um, I want to start a conversation. That's what this podcast is. It's just a place to talk all things nails and to start a conversation. So um, I have this app on my phone. I went on uh, the app store <laughs> on Apple and I typed in chat GBT because I was looking for... I don't know. I was looking for, I think at this point, I can't remember what it was, but I was like, you know what? AI probably would help. So I did. And then I was like, you know what? I could use this for a lot of my nail stuff. And so I typed in like do's and don'ts at a nail salon. Don't know where my voice just went. <laughs> I put in do's and don'ts uh, at a nail salon and like asked it to give me like some do's and some don'ts and I haven't read any of them. I just screenshotted real quick and then went out. So I'm going to be basically blind reacting to what chat GBT said were good do's and don'ts and if I agree with them or if I disagree with them. So that's today's episode. Hopefully you find this interesting and again if you have thoughts or opinions or anything on this like please tell me because I want to know. I want to I want to start conversation. So let me go to my screenshots and we're going to start with do's. So the first do was to schedule an appointment in advance to avoid long wait times. So I feel like this one's a given. <laughs> Thanks, ChatGBT. I feel like anybody could have figured that out, but I do think that's a given. It not only helps avoid long wait times, but it also prepares the artist. It prepares the person who's doing your nails so if you don't make a schedule I know like I have a hair stuck to my lip <laughs> I know that um like regular salons do walk-ins so maybe that's what they were the chat GBT was kind of like saying like hey you can avoid long wait times if you schedule an appointment but I don't I have found that that's not always the case. Sometimes you can schedule an appointment and they're like, oh, it's going to be like another 20 minutes because they squeezed in a walk-in before your appointment. So I guess do with that as you will. Um, but yeah, <laughs> for me, if you're like scheduling with me, you have to schedule an appointment because 
I'm one doing it out of my house and so I have to make sure I'm home but also um just because I'm taking like one client at a time I can't just have a bunch of people sitting in my house waiting so (laughs) the next one is communicate clearly with the nail technician about your preferences and expectations agree I agree with this 100% when I am doing my clients nails I will say is this good? Do you like this? Like as I'm going. So that way it doesn't get to the end where everything's cured and they're like, oh, (laughs) like, is that okay? Like I might be annoying, but I want you to communicate with me as much as possible. So that way I know I'm doing the best that I can do. The third thing they put on here is maintain good hygiene before your appointment by washing your hands and feet. Um, I don't do feet yet. So (laughs) And I probably, I don't think that I'll ever offer that as a service on myself, uh, for myself personally, but, um, you know, I can never say never, but I would appreciate if your feet were clean, your hands. Um, I feel like most people come in, like nobody's like in the garden, like digging and then just gets in their car and then comes to a nail salon. So (laughs) I feel like you, you kind of like already have that good, like hygiene, going so relax and enjoy the pampering experience for sure I know people say like you know um when you when your hand is on the uh armrest and like the person's telling you to relax it's most of the time because you're trying to help by holding and it really doesn't help I actually don't tell anybody to relax because if I tell them to relax, then I feel like it puts them more on edge. So by me not telling them to relax and like working around their like, uh, I don't know, their uncomfortability, they tend to relax. Now, if it's in an awkward position where like I cannot reach it, I will tell them, hey, move your arm this way or put your hand this way. But it's never like relax you're fine, (laughs) but you should relax and enjoy your pampering experience. Uh, Tip the nail technician appropriately for their services. I agree. Um, But fun fact, or I guess just fact that I've recently found out that America is one of the only like countries that like does tips and some countries actually find it rude. (laughs) to like tip them and I thought that was very interesting but I've grown up in America my entire life so I'm just used to tipping tipping is part of the experience tipping is you know part of when you go out to eat when you get a service done like tattoo hair nails um facials eyelashes all that it's like you pay the price and then you tip so I don't know I say yes to that Follow the recommended aftercare instructions to maintain your nails. Yes. Um, The aftercare instructions are really just be careful and be aware that your nails are done. (laughs) For me, at least. I don't know. Um, There might be some more educated uh, nail techs or just educated nail artists in general that have good aftercare like tips but for me it's like just be aware that your nails are there and then if you have like extensions or long extensions like watch them when they start to lift um you don't want them to lift so bad so that you're getting like dirt and stuff in there because you can develop um what is called a greenie i cannot remember the specific name of it at the moment but it's basically like bacteria build up and your nail gets green you basically have to wait for it to grow out and it's gross so (laughs) you don't want to do that So the next one is treat the salon staff with respect and kindness. Agree 100%. Whether you're working with an independent nail tech or going to a nail salon, I feel like when you are respectful and um, kind to anyone, anywhere you go, it doesn't even have to be just a nail salon, but because this is a nail podcast, that's what we're talking about. (laughs) But when you go to those places, when you even if you don't like your nails going at it with kindness and I know sometimes people can be rude and people can have bad days and whatever but when you keep your kindness and your composure it tends to change people's minds but when the customer starts to act up and the uh, artist starts to act up it just becomes this big thing that you don't really need and so 
in my space, in my salon, in my home, I create peace. I create kindness. I create an environment where people can come in and they just feel relaxed. And if, if a client comes in and they're upset, the atmosphere should make them change. It should make them feel better. So even though this seems to be more geared towards um, people going into the nail salon, I feel like as nail artists or people that are planning to work in a salon or planning to have a salon space or whatever, like think about this, treat your clients and the people that come in your space with kindness, because if you treat them with kindness, more times than not, they're going to treat you with kindness. And I've just, that has been my life (laughs) where other people might have bad experiences, other places. I tend to not really ever have a bad experience because I always come at I approach myself with kindness. I approach myself in a way, or I approach other people. (laughs) My, my being approaches other people with absolute kindness, with absolute niceness. There's no rudeness. There's no judgment. There's nothing. It's just, I come at you with kindness because that is who I am to the core. And I want to keep my space kind. I want to keep my space filled with peace. I want to keep my space a space of relaxation for people coming in. So I agree hundred percent on both sides. Uh, speak up if you have any concerns or discomfort during the service, please. (laughs) So there's ways that we can avoid heat spikes. Um, there's ways that we can avoid burning when, If, uh, you, if somebody is using an e-file on your nails, there are ways that we can like figure out to stop the pain. Okay. You shouldn't feel any discomfort. And if there is, because there are sensitive people to the UV, because I work with mostly gel, um, there's people that are sensitive to the UV light that when they put their hand in, it starts to burn. If you slowly, if you, I think I saw this on like, um, young nails, like they said to put the thing on 90, the the thing, the lamp on 90 seconds and have the client slowly like put their hand in the lamp like this, it's curing, but it's curing slower. The reason that it burns is because the gel is curing so fast that sometimes it can heat up real fast and it can burn the client. I've had that happen. It hurts. It's uncomfortable. And you want to say something so that way it can be fixed. It can be addressed. And if somebody says that's just how it is, don't believe them. (laughs) Don't believe them because you can fix it. Okay. I've done it. I haven't burnt. I, my nails have not burned in a lamp and I don't know how long you can fix it. Um, yeah, so bring reference pictures or ideas for the nail design that you want. Yes, for me, I know it helps so, so much. Even when I was a press on artist, I didn't really like doing freestyle sets because I feel like though I might wear it and sometimes I made them that I wouldn't even wear. So that was like a huge issue on my part, but I didn't like doing them because I would, I would do it in my style and not trendy. So if people were looking for more trendy nails, they would kind of skip over my stuff because it wasn't trendy. So for me now, I would prefer that you would bring in an inspiration picture and I will follow it as best as I can. But even if I can't follow it all the way, I will try to make it look like that. But it helps me to be creative um, with the things that you want. So if you want a French tip, but you want different colors or you want design in that French tip, it will help me to be able to help you (laughs) when you have the inspiration pictures. Practice patience and understanding if there are delays or issues. I definitely would say this for both artist and client. Artist, things happen. People wake up late. You've woken up late. You've been late to things. Your client I understand if they're no call, no show, understand. But if your client is running 15 minutes late because they got stuck at lights or they had to take their kids to school and there was an accident or whatever, like you have to factor in all of these other things. And so having patience with your clients is beautiful. 
it also helps to create that space where you have space where they have a space that they feel relaxed in and not rushed when they come in the door oh my gosh I'm so sorry I'm 15 minutes late the kids blah 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 blah. it's it's okay girl sit down just sit down (laughs) like let's get the nail nail appointment started you're good we're gonna get your nails right and we're gonna get you looking nice okay so that's just that's how I would be now again I understand if it's like the same person is late every single time or they're a no call no show those are two different completely different things but when somebody is late once or twice have grace okay so that's what they said for the dues i think those are good dues i wish that this was more for the nail artist though um but that's okay i feel like i'm doing a good job incorporating both so (laughs) thanks chat gbt don't okay so the first one is don't be late for your appointment as it may disrupt the salon schedule now i understand this completely from a salon's schedule like point of view because and even as an independent um person because if you have somebody who comes in 15 minutes late and you are scheduled to the t like once they leave, I know that I have 15 minutes to clean up my space, disinfect, do whatever I need to do for my next client. If you're, if your first client is 15 minutes late, that runs into your cleanup time that runs into your, uh, schedule. And now all your clients are being pushed back by 15 minutes. I understand that hundred percent. So I can understand where it gets messy. Thankfully, I, um, have learned as an independent nail tech that I am able to set time aside. So I set, I don't have like back to back to back to back to back clients because one, I'm just practicing. So I'm not really like pushing and promoting like all the time that I'm doing people's nails. I'm just kind of like, oh, you want your nails done? Yeah, I can do it, but I'm charging. (laughs) So, um, I, I have put on my where people can like tell me that they want to or want a book. I have, I think it's like an hour in between. So if my client is 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes late, I would still, I still know I have like 15 minutes in between their service. So again, I don't have that issue and I don't know how long I'd be able to keep that up if I was trying to go full time, like doing this eight hours a day. I don't know if I would be able to keep that up but I can try (laughs) to figure something out. So just making space for people to be late is fine for me. Um, Don't use your phone excessively during the service as it can be distracting. This I don't agree with at all. (laughs) If you want, like people, people got a text. Okay. People have are like having appointments that they're having to attend to meetings they have to attend to whatever and you're taking the time to come get your nails done I understand if you have to text the thing is don't be like with your hands in your hair and your nails tapping the screen one if I'm using gel you can get gel on your screen the gel's not going to cure and you can get it on your fingers and get an allergy and I'm just that's not my fault If you're using the pad of your finger, you're scrolling on TikTok or Instagram or whatever, that was fine. Uh, So I don't know. I don't, I don't agree with the phone one, but maybe you do. (laughs) Um, Don't be disrespectful or rude to the salon staff or other customers. I already covered this one. Um, I agree wholeheartedly when you have a nice kind space, your clients are more than likely going to be nice and kind and vice versa for the clients. If you come in nice and kind, the artist should come back at you being nice and kind. Don't bring outside food or drinks unless allowed by the salon. I guess that's a true statement. I feel like most independent nail techs, any independent nail tech that I follow, that has their own space or whatever most like nine times out of 10 their client comes in with a coffee for them (laughs) so it's like I think that that just is a personal preference if the salon's like please don't bring your food or drinks in here then that's one thing but you know I love I love 
the thought of being an independent nail tech because it creates such a bond with your clients to where still client first, but then friend afterwards. So it's like you're having this one-on-one time with a friend. Don't ask the nail technician to rush the service. This I agree with, though I don't think that anybody really has ever rushed me. (laughs) Um, Again, I'm not licensed. I'm not a nail tech. So it's whatever. People that are coming to me know that I'm practicing. So they're they're kind of like, take your time. Um, But there's, if you want your nails done a certain way, make time to have your nails done that way. If you're looking for a fast a fast appointment, you need your nails done real quick, get a solid color and get out. (laughs) And that's not to be rude. That's just me saying like, if you need to go, just be like, Hey, I need, I'm like leaving for, um, a wedding and I have to be on a flight in five hours. Can you do this? And like, like, is there any way I can make this appointment quick? And they're like, yeah, if you get a solid color and you're like, cool, thank you so much. Here's your tip. Love you so much. See you in two weeks. I'm out. <laughs> like that's, a, that's what I meant by that. It's not just like, get out. <laughs> like I, I realized that sounded rude, but, um, yeah, just p- pick something that you're going to want. That's not going to take that long. So for me, like the set I have on right now, it takes me a little bit longer to do my own nails just because I have to in and out of the lamp on one hand, I can't be doing both hands like simultaneously. So, um, when I do solid colors on myself, I feel like the time goes by so fast. Cause it's like, okay, two coats, top coat done instead of like design on each individual finger cure, and then go to the next hand design on each individual finger. So I know that if I get solids, I'm going to be like in and out. I, c- I can be like, okay, we have dinner plans. All right give me about an hour and I'll be out. Like that's the type, that's how fast (laughs) solids are for me. So pick, pick your design when, pick your design based on the time that you have. If you know you have all day, then pick the most intricate thing you can. But if you are in a rush, just know that you're in a rush and the design that you might, might have wanted originally might not be able to be done in the time frame that you're needing it to be done. So that's all I'm saying with that one. Um, where am I? Don't be afraid to ask questions or express your preferences. So again, I think I've said this in my, like in my podcast before, don't know when, don't know where, (laughs) but I think I have said it, but don't be afraid to ask what's going on. Why does the tool look rusty? Why does this look like that? What is this? What is that? It can be annoying, but if you're doing it more out of curiosity and not out of malicious intent, the artist should be able to pick up on that. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I don't have a problem with people asking me questions and asking me why things are a certain way or why I do things a certain way. doesn't bother me one bit, but I would say don't be afraid to ask um, and just say, hey, you know what? I actually don't like when you file my nails down that hard. Please don't do that. (laughs) That's just me. That's just a little trauma from a nail salon. Uh, Okay. Don't pick or bite your nails ever. I'm just kidding. It doesn't say ever, but that's just for me. Um, Don't pick or bite your nails during or after the service, especially during any nail any nail product, anything that's supposed to go on your nails should not be going in your mouth, but gel, especially, I won't even say especially anything at a nail salon should not be going in your mouth. Um, so (laughs) don't put your hands in your mouth and I would be upset if I saw my work beautifully done on somebody's nails and then they're walking out like, biting their nails. Like, girl, I just spent hours on that. Why are you biting it off? So please don't do that. Don't be afraid to speak up if you're unhappy with the results. 
I know how hard this can be because I have lied so many times leaving hair salons, nail salons, whatever, especially hair salons, <laughs> especially hair salons, because in at this point in time, I have locks. I used to have very curly hair, very big curly hair, and I could not find anyone to do it. I needed it cut so bad. I've had so many bad haircuts. I've had so many... <laughs> so many people just take things to my hair that they that shouldn't be I remember going in there and if you have curly hair you know and then if you are if you are black you know if somebody takes a dry or sorry a brush to your dry hair what happens it rips out it sounds horrible it does not feel good and that's not how you're supposed to take care of your curly hair. And so I've just had so many experiences where I was in pain. I did not like how it looked. I, um, somebody burned my head right here. I was going, I think it was my junior prom and I was getting my hair, like it was straightened already and I was getting it curled. So they were doing my makeup and curling it. And that girl took that iron and put it right on my head like an hour or two before prom horrible horrible I've had bad experiences at nail salons I mean hair salons nail salons I haven't had that many bad experiences but there have been a few where I've just been like okay I'm never coming back here again um so yeah I haven't been to a nail salon in a really long time and I really need my feet done <laughs> um So yeah, don't be afraid, even though I know it's hard, but that's why I said communication during the salon or during the appointment is key because if you're like, if you see, if you're using gel and you look down and you see, oh, I don't like that design or I actually don't like this French tip or whatever, like for me, tell me because then I'll just wipe it off and I'll do something else. But if I've already cured it, then it's like a whole process. So I would say if you're not happy with your results at the end, next time have communication going forward, because unless you're willing to like sit through a whole nother nail appointment, because it's a soak off and like putting it back on, depending on what you get, like that's going to be a while. So I would just say for the next time have communication definitely speak up if you're not happy with them because there might be something your nail tech can do but I would just say just have communication during don't haggle over prices or negotiate discounts this one I cannot speak on um that much because again I'm practicing so all of like what people are buying or what people are paying me is really just going back to restock my products. So my nail tips, my polishes, my top coats, all the things like that's what that's for. And so if people are like, "Mm, I actually don't want to pay like, what is it for a structured manicure? It's $35. That is considered a luxury service in some places and can be up to like $90 for a full set. So let's (laughs) not come at me for my prices right now. Um, just because it really is just to restock. That's it. It's just to restock my products. But when you have somebody sitting at a desk, staring at your hands for two hours doing little intricate designs and you don't want to pay the price that they're asking for you probably shouldn't have gone to that tech just saying because I think when we see people on Instagram we're like oh my gosh we love this we love that they're so good I want to go to her and then we go to her and she has high prices because she knows her worth we get upset and we want discounts and all these all these other things and it's just don't do that (laughs) don't do that Now, if you're a nail artist and you want to give a discount or you want to give some money off or whatever, do it. But that's your choice. Don't get bullied into having like a lesser price, like know your worth and stick to it. The last one is don't forget to book your next appointment for maintenance. 
This is something that I believe is really important uh, when you are a nail tech and a um, client. (laughs) I am so sleepy. My brain is like starting to go like this, like, okay, it's time to stop recording. (laughs) Um, But I believe that this is so important because you want to keep up with your nails. You want to keep up with the service that you got. You want proper removal, anything. So if you're like, you know what, I'm going to get this gel X and in two weeks I'm going back and I'm taking it off and I'm like done with the nails. That's fine. But go and get them properly removed. Don't try to like pull them off or rip them off or wait a super long time and then be like, ugh, I can't get these off. Let me go to the nail tech. Like keep your, keep your schedule. Like, okay, I got these on Friday this week, the day I got paid. And so I will come back in two weeks the next day I get paid and I will get my nails done again or however you want to do it. That's how I used to do it. I would go the day I got paid. (laughs) So I know what day was like two weeks. Um, but yeah. And then for the nail artist, it helps you to keep a consistent schedule. And so you kind of know like, okay, Sally comes at 10 a.m. on 10 (laughs) a.m. 10 a.m. on Fridays So I can expect every two weeks to have Sally on at 10 a.m. So that way I can kind of be cautious of who is coming in and who's coming out. And like when I get new clients, I'm not going to book them because I have a steady client here. Um, It also helps you to keep your schedule in a sense of like, okay, I know I have a heavy week this week and the next week is not so heavy because like everybody's getting their fills and soak offs and everything week two (laughs) and or sorry week three so I kind of break it up like this week one you have your base you put on everybody's nails and then you have week two which is like everybody's nails what happened oh (laughs) my light went off I was like why did the why did this look weird but it's fine um You'll have everybody's, so you'll have everybody's nails like being put on. Then you'll have their week where they're like wearing them out and they're starting to grow out. And then you have week two and they're like, oh, I have a nail appointment Friday. Thank God. So you have your week one, week two and week three. So week one and week three are busy weeks because those are your two week periods. But then you have week two and week four, which are probably not as heavy because those are new clients. Those are people that are late on their, um, one, two, three, four schedule, (laughs) like the people like that. So that's how I see it. At least hopefully that made sense. I feel like my brain just went "Mm," and I, I think I'm glad that this is, (laughs) I'm glad that that list is done. Cause I don't think I would have been able to go through it with it anymore. And my light went out. How, how upsetting, how upsetting. So anyways, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I felt nice and cozy. I like this vibe. I like having the chair. I like having like the mic is like at my mouth and not having to have a table is really nice. And then obviously having cozy club behind me, like that's so cool. Um, I wanted to say cozy girl, fancy nails, but you can see it would have been way too long. So cozy club was good. Cause this is cozy, a cozy club. So you can follow me anywhere. I am on TikTok, Instagram, here on YouTube, Cozy Girl Fancy Nails on all of it. Um, You can also join my Facebook group. It is called Cozy Club by Nails by Michaela, I think. Um, (laughs) It's linked in the description of this episode of this podcast. I thank you guys so, so much for listening. You guys are truly amazing and I love the growth that I'm seeing and like just more people being into this podcast and wanting to hear it. And it's really cool to know that people actually listen to me and (laughs) really, really like to listen and really like to watch and it's just awesome. So thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a good rest of your Tuesday or whatever day you are watching this and remember to stay cozy and to keep your nails fancy and I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.